Well, would you look how cute this is? This is my test video. Here's Punkabella. And I am sitting here. I feel like utter absolute crap today. I've got the hormones from hell and pulling my hair out. And so what better thing to do when you're already feeling really unattractive, bloated, have the post-cancer nose blob thing going, than make a movie of yourself. But um, Mr. Spells expressed an interest in seeing how I make a collage. And I came home tonight feeling like shit. And so I figured what better thing to do than make a collage. Because making collages are things that I can do that really just, I feel creative, but I'm also completely emptying myself of horribleness. And I think I am too strung out right now to make a pen noise. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, so I just took my glasses off because they're bothering my nose. I just tested the camera. I think this is making a movie, so I showed you my pen noise. These are some of my collages. For a long time, I was working in 8x10 and my whole 8x10 series, so I have a whole buttload of 8x10 collages that I haven't yet framed, and they're a little more fragile than the pen noise, so i got to be careful shuffling through them, so all these guys need frames, and I think that I had a great idea. Oh, I'm painting my bedroom uh, bruise color, and so I'm going to do something with the collages in there. Now I'm working on an 11 by 14 series in my National Geographic. So here's three in the 11 by 14. So when I scan these, I have to scan them in halves because they don't fit in the scanner entirely. So tonight I'm going to work on another one of my 11 by 14 National Geographic. So I'll tell you about the National Geographic now. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so welcome to my inner sanctum. This here, <laughs> this is not the most organized thing in the world. I have tons of collage materials in this room. There's a whole bunch of it underneath my desk or one of them. And right here, though, these National Geographics are ones. This, these lines here are ones that were given to me by a woman at the Encinitas Public Library. I went in there one day when I was on a trip, just looking for. Uh, something to collage from the little book sale thingy that they have there. And she's like, can I help you? And I'm just looking for some National Geographic. She said, a whole bunch I can just give you. And she gave me this giant box of National Geographic from the 60s. So I brought them home, and I've been working through them. And uh, I usually just pick one. So I've got, if I grab a set out here, you'll see that here... There's a miscellaneous in there. <laughs> I've got, like, in this set right here, if I look at the spines, I've got March 1964, September 1965, March 69, May 65, December 65, September 64, etc. So what I'll do, oh, look at that. There you go, men on the moon. How we plan to put men on the moon. So they were just planning it back then, okay? So that's really cool. It hadn't even happened yet. That's because it was 1964. And I remember when men went on the moon because I was in a second grade, I think it was, and we watched it on television in school. So anyway, but so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick one of these magazines, and what I usually do is I grab like three, so I'll just grab the top three, and so the top three are 64, uh, March 64, September 65, and March 69. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over to my desk and I'm going to flip through them and I'm just going to pick one at random that I'm going to work from. That I, that it's not completely at random because I'm picking one of three. I like to give myself an option. Okay? But I do st stick with a single source so whichever one I pick I will only work from that material. Note that Punkabella has stolen my chair because that's her favorite chair so I'm now going to have to wheel her. Let's see if I can buy Punkabella. You're getting wheeled and we will move in a red chair. And I'm going to sit in that. Look how dirty the top of my desk is, but that's a good sign because that's all like glue and pen and crap. And I'm in desperate need of cleaning in here, but in my current hormonal stage, there's no way I'm going to do that. So what I usually do is I will look through these, and usually I flip through and see, look at that red lobster. But something like that that's that big I hardly ever end up using, even though I like the Red Lobster. A lot of times I'll do is I'll cut something else like that out and I'll give it to someone as a present and I'll be like, here, I love you, here's a lobster. So, Or use it as a bookmark because lobsters make good bu bookmarks. So what I'll do is like I'll flip through and see. I don't like really overt 
pictures. I try to find things that I can use that are more marginal to the central text. I like to develop an environment that relying on the specificity of the year and the month, March 1964, but removing the specificity from it. So, for example, if I were to use an astronaut picture or a thing from the moon planning, it would have to be taking the ones that are less obvious, like that's the kind of image that I like to use because I like all the grids and everything for backgrounds. I love that kind of image, but I'd have to juxtapose it to something else to de-emphasize the historic specificity. So, the collage will be made from this very historic moment, March 1964, if I use this one. Actually, I guess I should since I'm talking about it. But then I have to take away the specificity. I love this kind of thing, see, with the industrial grid. But then I have to have things. I also don't like to really rely too heavily on the exoticization of other cultures, you know, behind the veil of troubled Yemen. So it just, unless I am able to use it you know, with something else that makes it less just like this kind of exotic image, you know. So I don't know if that makes sense. So I'm going to look through these. I'll get back to you in a sec. Okay, so here's something interesting. So I'm going through that other one, the March 1964, and it's got a whole thing on JFK's funeral. So this is the kind of thing that drives some people crazy about my collages because you know, will I dare to cut up this historic artifact that has all this stuff on JFK's funeral? And the truth of the matter is, not only will I probably cut it up, but I'll also take away the specificity. So it will be JFK's funeral. Like, I'll know that, but how it's used in the collage may not specifically tell you that it's JFK's funeral. So not only do I bastardize this document that could be a historic fetish document, but I also disallow it, even the specificity for it to be fetishized. Why do I do that? I'm sure there's something I'll have to think about, but I just wanted to show that because I thought that that was an interesting thing. Like, I love the colors here and this, like, all these masked people, and I'll probably use some of that, but then uh, subvert it by pushing it into the background.